Um, hi, everybody. Um, so, yeah, uh, as Megan said, um, my talk today is around storing integration tests alongside development code. Um, it's been a bit of a journey that we've had. Um, even though we've only had automation at uh, the Modern Milk Man for around nine months now, um, we've changed how we operate. And hopefully going forward, it'll mean that we can automate tests faster um, and prove that there's, there's no issues in, in, the, in the system um, as early as possible. Um, so, yeah, um, I thought I'd give a brief overview of how we currently stand. Um, so we've got several automation strands. So we have typical UI with uh, Selenium, we have API tests, and we have some hybrid API and UI tests um, that we're involved with. Um, initially, these were all part of separate repos. Um, it meant that the tests were completely separate from the code um, that had that you know contain the microservices and the websites, um, and it meant that we often found that we had code that was being um, developed and we were writing tests against, but then we couldn't um, push these to a, uh, the master branch of the, the automated tests because that meant that we couldn't then run the master branch in production until the, um, the actual code made it there. Um, so that meant that we had to sort of either hold back or create multiple branches that we that we'd have different pipelines for in Azure. Um and it, it, it became tricky to to manage um and to know what was been what had been deployed, what hadn't, and managing those merging issues. Um, it also meant that often we'd have to go back to a developer and ask them questions around um around code that they'd written some time ago. Um, and that meant that they had then had to go and refresh their memory about what they'd written and why it did the thing they did um, before we'd be able to um, sort of decide whether or not there was a bug. Um, and if there was a bug, we're then raising code, raising that code, um, that bug against code that's already been into a test environment or into into UAT. Um, whereas ideally, um, we'd want to be reporting those bugs much earlier while the code is still fresh. Um, ideally, before it's even, even been deployed to an environment, um, you know, and, and it would mean then that we'd have tests that the developers are now uh, actively um, developing against those tests. Um, so we almost turn into sort of be behavior driven development. Um, ooh, not too far there. Uh, so, yeah. Our solution was to initially move uh, the API tests into the repo where the microservices were being kept. Um, this meant that we'd have much more um, uh, oversight of what, what was happening in, in that microservice at any time. If a new um, endpoint was being created, we were able to discuss with the developer, you know, what what's what is the body look like, what are the responses, um, and even go in and have a look at the code itself and sort of follow that through as the developers actively working on it. Um, it meant we had better communication with those developers, and the developers were very keen as well then to to sort of get involved with these tests and sort of say, well, it should do this. So you know, we could, maybe we could write a test around that for us. Um, and we you know, happily obliged and got involved with that. Um, it also meant that we had access to models um, that the developers were actively changing, um, which meant that we can build uh, request bodies for those APIs a lot easier, a lot quicker. Um, and uh, it also meant that if those models changed going further down the line, um, we'd have the ability to to update those as soon as possible because those tests would basically fail in the development environment. Um, and we'd update them quickly, uh, get them fixed, get them pushed back into the into the uh, repo, um, and then they'd be happily happily running along. Um, it also meant that as those microservices progressed through the um, deployment lifecycle, um, from test to UAT to, to pre-prod to production, um, the tests then follow alongside. So we know that the code that we're we're testing against is the same code that we've written those tests against, um, which effectively improved um, the um, number of the, the, reduced the number of bugs that were making it through to production because we were catching it much much earlier. 
The only issues that we still faced then at that point were the UI tests were still isolated in their own repo. Um, they were still using unique API holders. Um, we have several strands of, of UI automation for um, the custom website, uh, the customer apps, and um, for our uh, in-house customer service portal. Um, and those UI tests were still isolated. They were isolated from each other as well. Um, and also, like, like I say, they had their own unique API callers, so there was no standardization. Um, and we were using models that were passed let, with the legacy models that were passed through uh, as a NuGet package from development. Um, development weren't keen on keeping uh, keeping that NuGet package up to date. Um, totally understandable. You know, it's just another thing that they have to do, um, which didn't sort of help development. It only helped test. Um, and so we ha then had to sort of create our own models in the UI tests um, again, which meant that um, we'd have, you know, Possibly they were incorrect or out of date or you know, didn't have the latest properties on them, um, which meant that we'd often sort of have an issue calling an API only to realize that it was our issue because our, our uh, body that was being sent wasn't accurate. Um, so we moved on to a, a sort of second um, solution, um, and that was to create a utility framework. Um, we use Specflow as part of our um, automated tests. That's both for API and for UI. Um, and this utility uh, framework would allow us to have all the setup for the UI tests and the uh, API tests. It also meant that we could also store um, any SQL queries that we use for pulling test, pulling data out of the database for as part of tests or inserting as part of a test setup. Um, we included API caller interfaces. Um, and we had a dependency on the shared view models that were within this microservices repo. Um, we also meant that we had a, a nice NuGet package process, which was based on our, our branching strategy. So it follows the exact same process that the developers do. Um, and it also means now that the API tests can be written alongside the development, which was a massive, massive uh, perk. Um, it meant that we were sort of, in the code with the developers, um, you know, asking why does it do this thing? Can we make it do this? Can we get it to respond with this response? Um, just the usual things that that you know, little things that are overthought or not thought about um, at planning. Um, and it also allowed us to um, test APIs that hadn't even been deployed to an environment. We used a, a clever combination of tie dapper and Docker, um, which meant that we could run um, all our APIs locally if we wanted to, or just a subsection, um, which is relevant, for example, if we wanted to um, test our um, uh, our cart microservice, um, we'd be able to um, have the customer login API running at the same time as the, 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 the car microservice. So we'd be able to log in as a customer um, and use that authentication as part of the uh, API call to the cart um, without having to, to have these deployed anywhere. So all the changes could be run before um, the developers you know, completely finished, which we can write tests, um, which the developers can use to sort of validate what they've done. Um, and also to sort of go, you know, their final check before they deploy it. I can run these tests, uh, we, can, we can get that kicked off and, and off we go. Um, and then I guess sort of finally, um, it was the UI tests uh, um, that we, there were still this, these API callers that were distinct. So what we did is we turned this utility framework into a new get package um, of our own, which we manage, which we're quite happy to manage. Um, and we're able to then uses all these API callers that we were using in the API tests as part of the UI tests. This meant that we could speed up the UI tests by having these hybrid UI tests, which would use uh, the APIs to, to either create test data or uh, delete test data, or even just to modify test data and make sure that that uh, modification now appears on the front end. So we use this um, using uh, dependency injection, um, which meant everything's, you know, it, it just worked really well and we're able to keep these um these ui tests running really smoothly um and really quickly which is the important part because obviously we know all of the 
UI tests can be um, slow to run compared to obviously the API tests. Um, it also meant now that all our APIs, how we call those APIs, is now standard across the different strands of UI automation. It also means that those API calls that are made are accurate for that uh, stru that branch. Um, so we have all our branching strategy now is is much easier and it's much more aligned, and it follows the same process as developers, um, which means that you know like the issue we had at the beginning where we had um, code that wasn't deployed or to an environment. Now we can run these tests and just say pull pull that branch with the development code and the UI tests and let's run them together so we know that the code that we're testing is is at the same level as the, the UI tests. Um, and the biggest thing is obviously that we can, if there's any changes to these APIs, um, we can quickly and, and very, very easily distribute those changes um, to the correct set suite of UI tests. Um, that's it for me. Um, you know, this is this is a perk that we've seen. Um, it's been um, a bit of a journey. We've had to rewrite some of these frameworks several times, um, but it's been interesting and it's been um, bought into by the developers as well. They're really keen on this, um, and they're really happy to get involved and use these um, these practices and this way of working um, to speed up the development process and also at the end of the day to, to reduce the amount of regression testing done by manual testers um it's a win-win either way um and it just speeds up that software development life cycle 